My name is Dr Ruth Ayres from Plymouth Marine Laboratory. We have a project funded by the Natural Environment Research Council to look at enosmolites. These are small charged compounds that are used by the tiny cells in seawater to survive in a salty environment. And we're interested in them because they're important to these cells for both nutrients and also they can break down to form special gases which can transfer to our atmosphere and then affect cloud formation. So right now we're heading out to station L4 of the Western Channel Observatory to take some seawater samples so that we can actually measure these enosmolites and also take some DNA samples so we can see which cells are using them and how they're using them. So at the moment the CTD rosette is under the water and this is how we get our water samples. On the rosette we've got 12 individual bottles and those bottles close at different depths and we know exactly the depth that those bottles have closed so we know where the water sample is coming from. So here we are back at PML. I'm going to transfer some extraction solvent to each tube that we can then extract the osmolites into. So when we have the final extract, these are analysed on this instrument, which is a liquid chromatograph coupled to a mass spectrometer. The output we get are peaks like these, which here we have a peak for glycine betaine, choline and TMAO, the three osmolites that we're looking for. When the water arrives from the boat, I'm taking subsamples of a few milliliters and adding nitrogen osmolites to it. These nitrogen osmolites, in this case it's glycine betaine, are 14C labeled. This 14C label makes the sample radioactive, which means we can later trace it in the filter cells. Samples are now incubated for 10 minutes at in situ temperature. Then I will filter it off and measure the radioactivity. Due to the radioactivity in the cell, I can later, over these eight different concentrations, calculate how likely the cells are to use my compound, glycine betaine, as a food source, in this case for carbon. In parallel, we want to know who of this community, which we assume is bacteria, actually is the most important players in taking up the compound. And therefore, we need some DNA work and sequencing, and that we are doing at Warwick. Overall, this project will give us a far greater understanding of the significance of nitrogenous osmolites, both for the microbes that use them and as precursors of climate-active compounds.